Hey everyone, I'm Joe. Recently I went to San Jose, California to attend the 76th Worldcon. The Worldcon is a very large book convention, which is where the Yugo ceremony is held, which is one of the oldest and most prestigious, at least most people think it is, awards within science fiction and fantasy. And it was a brilliant week. I did a separate video about the week as a whole uh, only a few days ago, which I'll link in the description box below. This video is the book haul that is associated with going to the World Con. Now, strangely enough, I actually did not plan to buy any books whilst at the World Con. It may seem strange, the fact that I thought I could go to a very large World Con and not buy any books, but that was the plan. However, two things occurred that um, you know, stopped that plan from happening, for me not buying books, and that was I ended up in a bookshop and Rachel Kalinardi on Booktube was there. Ergo, I bought books because how can I not buy books when Rachel's standing right next to me and I have the opportunity to sarcastically and also um, seriously blame and thank her for making me buy books. I can't pass that opportunity up. I need to be able to blame and thank her for things. So, hence, I bought myself uh, a few fair few books. Oh, and I got one free as well. Anyway, without further delay, I'll get started just talking about the books. The first book happens to be the smallest and that is The Lucky Strike by Kim Stanley Robinson. This is a very, very small book. It's actually one of the smallest books I've brought in years. It's barely over 100 pages. And it is not just a fiction book. It's actually a bit of an unusual book for me because this is actually three uh, books in one as such because it has a short novella in it. It has a essay about where Kim Stanley Robinson talks about um, some scientific issues of interest to him and about how he researches things I believe of which considering how much research he puts into his books like obviously the Mars trilogy which I loved that should be really interesting and there is also a interview that he did uh, several years ago so this should be a really interesting collection where you got fiction an essay and an interview from an author that I really like because I really do like Robinson he's a very interesting author and I just think this could be a very interesting take on him because I don't normally read things like this so this could be something a little bit different for me. I'm quite excited. The second book is by the same publisher as that previous one which I forgot to mention is PM Press and this second book is Sisters of the Revolution edited by Anne and Jeff Vandermeer. Now this is one that I've heard a little bit about recently but not too much. I know that Rachel Kalanadi also wants to read this and several other people do and frankly the cover stands out really obviously. I've heard of about half the orders, uh, authors in this book. I haven't heard of the other half and this is just a series of science fiction uh, stories but specifically around feminist speculative fiction. So this should be quite an interesting one. The authors are really varied, there are some extremely well known ones um, and some really unknown ones. I mean obviously one of the most well known is Ursula Le Guin, there's Catherine M. Valente, uh, Carol Ermschweiler who's well known amongst the circles, Joanna Ross, Pat Murphy and many others, Octavia Butler, James Tipton Jr, Naila Hopkinson and there's a, there's a few that I personally I've never heard of like Leonora Carrington I've never heard of her but considering the company that she's in in this book she, I'm hoping and expecting her to be pretty impressive actually because this sounds like a really interesting collection of familiar science fiction stories. The third book that I got was Orbital Cloud by Toyo Fuji. Now I actually met the author for this because he's, he's actually at the stand where the book was and I got it signed which I'm going to attempt to show you now which, yep, I found the right correct page that should come across okay, I'm hoping it does and this is a book that I've been quite curious about for quite a while now Rachel Kanadi did a review of this quite some time ago now, I think nearly a year ago I think it was and she made it sound really interesting, well she always makes everything sound really interesting and when I saw it, I had to buy it Basically, I mean, Rachel was buying books from this stand. Also, Rachel also met the author, and the author was very excited uh, Tyler was, to meet Rachel. He gave Rachel a big hug, and actually, he wanted a photograph with Rachel, which I think made us all smile when Rachel's 
becoming like, sort of like the famous one of our little group in the world kind of, and actually all for one photograph with Rachel rather than rather than her wanting photographs with them. It's just really nice to see and it made us all smile. And this book is quite an interesting one by the sound of it because it's based around the simple premise, relatively speaking, of there is some uh, orbiting space debris floating around the earth. A small weather satellite and its company notices this um, debris and notices it's a bit strange because it seems to be in more of a normal uh, and stable orbit than what space junk normally is and this leads to various other events governments get involved military gets involved people are starting to get paranoid that is this actually space debris is this some kind of orbiting weapon is it something else nobody knows what it is and a lot of things happen basically because of it it sounds really fascinating and i'm very happy to get to this and the next book is actually one that I got free from um, the same publisher and this is one that I don't actually know how you pronounce the name it's Sayansu Faiku Shan I have no idea how to pronounce that I really don't so yeah that's a problem there <laughs> 2016 edition as well this is basically three novellas in one fairly small book basically anything you brought from that this particular publisher at that stand you are given a copy of this for which I'm grateful because it actually sounds really quite interesting the three authors that are part of it are Toby Hirataka, Tuck Enjo and Tai Fuji the author of um, Orbital Cloud this is um, sort of quite an interesting collection of three novella length stories I know nothing about them and frankly I don't want to read anything about them and I don't want to know anything about them I want this to be a spoil hence why I've not looked at the back at all I'm still not going to look at it now all I know is it's by the author well one of the one of the authors of uh, Orbital Cloud and it could be quite an interesting little read so I'm quite excited to get this one because this is a bit of a unknown to me which for me is very rare I don't normally read things that are completely unknown this is so this could be quite a strange little experience for me I then got Gods, Monsters and the Lucky Peach by Kelly Robson. This is one that I know Rachel really liked earlier this year, actually not all that long ago in fact. It's a very small book. It sounds really interesting. This is um, climate change science fiction where this is set a few hundred years in the future. The world has suffered from global warming and also various disasters and now it's essentially a sort of a the world is in chaos and he's trying to decide what to do about nature and the environment some countries want to completely ignore the problem and just carry on as always which you know is true this is day i think but this book is true it's just expanded some countries are desperately trying to massively change the way they do things and want to obviously try to sort of repair the environment some want to do things somewhere in between and some want to do radically different ideas which could be potentially be dangerous so it's governments having issues with each other because they've got ideas they all want to do their ideas but they can't all do their ideas because it affects the planet on a global scale so this sounds like an interesting book and for me the sort of thing that I like reading about so this should be a really good one now the next two books are actually a geology and the one is not even officially out yet I don't think until the end of this uh, coming week at uh, the very end of August and that is The Calculating Stars and The Fighting Sky, both by Mary Robinette Cow. I've never read anything by Cow before, but I've been wanting to for many years now. Um, this second book, as I said, is not actually out until the end of this week, I believe, at least in the UK. And both of these books are very difficult to obtain in the UK. They are published by Tor. Tor always seems to be horribly difficult to get in the UK for the most part and also really expensive in the America these were much cheaper than they are in the UK so if you notice several of these books are actually by tour because uh, you know the price I was trying to sort of um, you know, save myself money in the long run this is a science fiction duology where the main character is a woman who wants to be the first lady astronaut this is alternate history the first book is set in the year 1952 a huge meteor has fallen to earth, ruined the world and now we are essentially trying to sort of evacuate the earth 
but this is 1952 so that we don't really have the technology and obviously the space program isn't really there so we try to sort of create a new space program or alternative space program to what actually happened with different people and it just sounds really fascinating and obviously I think it's more of a journey of this main character a woman who wants to be um, part of a world which is entirely especially then male dominated so she's trying to get into a world that's against her and it's her journey her spirit that's trying to you know, overcome many issues which frankly still affect people today sadly enough so this sounds like a really interesting geology and one that I'm really I'm looking forward to reading and finally the last book is Tomorrow's Kin by Nancy Chris now this is actually based on a short story of the same name that Nancy Chris um, did several years ago and I read two years ago I really like the short story this is actually the first in a duology so there will be a second one which will be called If Tomorrow Comes which I will also be very interested in reading because I'm almost certain that I will like this because I like the short story it's based on and the basic idea is that an alien species you know, all mysterious and things comes down to earth and they land in the ocean and the coastline just off New York City in America they are not aggressive we start interacting with these aliens although we don't know much about who they are what they're up to and we start learning from them they learn from us and we learn there's more out in the universe than just these aliens and some of them are dangerous and the story goes from there I, I don't really want to know too much more because I've already read the short story it's based on so it, if I know too much about the books it will probably spoil the plot for me and I don't want that to happen of course but the short story was great I really did enjoy it it's actually one of my favourites I've read at the time I remember thinking that so this should be an interesting book and again by the way it is a tour book I've got to think about buying tour books as and when I'm able to especially if I'm getting cheaper than what they are normally in the UK because they are just really are horribly expensive I know I've mentioned that once but it's it's quite an important point to me because the the price is noticeable in the UK. So with that said that's it for all of the books that I bought in America. I didn't really plan to buy any of these but like, as I said Rachel was there so I ended up buying books. They all sound interesting and I do plan to try and get to most of these fairly soon. I'm, at the moment my idea is I want to read books a bit closer to when I buy them for a change rather than buying them and then leaving them on my shelf for a year or two years or five years as the case of some of the books I've got I want to leave these for no more than a few months get to them, at least a majority of them anyway so we'll see how I manage if you've read any of these then please leave a comment if you have any book suggestions for me based on any of these that you think I might enjoy again leave a comment I'm always interested and excited to get to new authors and new books all my social media links as well as a link to Rachel's channel can be found in the description box below as always and with that said, that is it for this video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in all day. Bye for now.